This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. That It reminds me, Luke, um, that yeah. th there's, this, th there's this saying that people would say, and I only recently come to understand it. I think, I don't even know if the NPCs may have already discussed this or not, but that whole, uh -huh. that whole cliche saying of, you know, um, it's like see you later, and the other person says, "Not if I fight, not if I see you, not unless I see you first. <laughs> I see you yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, that never. I I was like, whatever. I never even really thought about that much. But I actually, yeah. yeah I think. Did you guys talk about this on anywhere? No, no, I can't. I can't uh, recall if we have. It might have been something that came up as an actual dialogue. Okay. In one of the games, but yeah. Um, because yeah, I I mean, I think it was. I don't know if explained. Someone explained it to me, or it occurred to me that what that means is that other person, if they see you first, they're gonna like avoid you and not run into you, kind of thing. So see you later, not not unless I see you first. And yeah, that's what that means. They I mean screw you. Not if I see I'm, you first. Yeah. I will avoid you. Kind of. In many ways, well, yeah, either that or like they're going to assassinate you. you know? <laughs> but yeah, yours is probably the more accurate, um, like reading of that one. And that's kind of mean. A little bit, but you know, if you have the right kind of rapport oh, with sure. somebody, that's the kind of well, thing that you, you know. Yeah, even if you have the right rapport with somebody, it's still like, I don't know, is that really funny? Sure. Is it all right? What's what's the turn of phrase? Oh. Uh, when someone says, see you later, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if someone tells you, see you later, and they, they give you the double finger guns, they go, not unless I see you first. And then everyone laughs. <laughs> or, yeah, not I was I thinking first, about yeah. that. Was I talking about that on a previous episode that's I, of this? Yeah, that's what I thought. I asked Luke and he's like, I can't he remember, but yeah. I, I I don't remember that specifically, but like yeah, maybe you were then if if the if Julia is, is remembers that as much as well. So it would have been it would have been I think pre Julia because I this is that was like a way in the back of my mind that expression. But yeah, I also have thought about how strange that expression. <laughs> I think is. I must have listened so, to it. Yeah, when you guys yeah. What what I thought that expression meant for most of my life was not if I see you first means mm -hmm. I will shoot you if I see you first and you won't <laughs> see me saying, because you'll be dead. I might be, I might assassinate you. So you, you know, you won't see me. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but. I, I, I think I was calling my dad one day and chatting with him. And I said like, that's a bizarre expression. And he says, I think the expression actually means if I see you, I will avoid yes. you and yes. not be seen myself. Yes, exactly. That was my understanding. Which is, much less threatening. I always thought it meant as soon as I see you, I'm going to pull out my gun and kill wow. you so that you <laughs> never see me. You won't even hear the bullet. I wonder what that says about yeah, you, I about whether say. your your interpretation of the of the meaning of that. I you know because I, I was in the Alex camp about that one as well, where I'm like, yeah, you know, the most logical mm -hmm. conclusion is, yeah, because I'm going to kill you. <laughs> we are going uh, to be enemies next time we meet, and therefore the first person to spot the other one will be the victor. I'm I'm I guess more inclined to believe that the less pleasant interpretation is true. It's harder to get disappointed that way. <laughs> We heard you come back. We missed you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks. You I'm just missed. chilling. I'm even at a bad angle for my microphone. You know? Yeah, you got a little bit of a little bit more reverb than usual. Probably yeah. Because, yeah. All right, I, I'm gonna stop chilling. I'm gonna sit up straight like a big boy. Mm -hmm, take I this seriously, chill, like man. Villain? We can do a chill episode. Chill like a chill. Woo! Are All gonna, right. Are we gonna just have a have another mailbag episode where we listen to this nice music? I'm down. I'm, I'm totally down. fine with that. Yeah. I've got. We no... did be damned to the mailbag, and we did do some gameplay just now. Yeah, yeah. We did a lot of gameplay the last episode. I mean, like not a lot, a lot, but you know, the regular amount. Turn, we we saw like three new rooms. No more Jenna Elfman Wikipedia page. No more Moon Wikipedia page. Get rid of the Skeletor Wikipedia page. All right. Just to clarify my stance on the moon, if someone wants to approach me with, here's some interesting facts about the moon that suggest it might be a spaceship. 
Sure, I'll entertain that idea. I'm gonna, you want to come at me with, hey, did you know the moon <laughs> is a spaceship? Then it is not more offensive for me to say no, it isn't. That's it, but that's <laughs> but that's the most fun way to say it. It's true, but it's also the most fun for me to be. No, it is not. Right? If you want to, if you want to talk hypotheticals, let's talk hypotheticals. You want to throw around statements? It's not more closed-minded of me to say no, it isn't. I mean, that's right? Fair. Those that's are fair. the same. That's fair. Uh, I don't like. I, I don't. Similarly, uh, it, it ties into my idea about people's beliefs. Right? People can believe whatever they want, but if someone comes at me talking about you know, religion or astrology or tarot or whatever they want. My beliefs are just as important. So if I look you in the eye and say, God is dead and we are his children, you have to respect that as much. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't actually believe that the moon is a spaceship, but I think there's something fucked up about it. I really do. Um, it's a super conspicuous <laughs> celestial body. Yeah, yeah, there is no really other no other planet has one like it. It is definitely an object of study, and we should definitely go back. Uh, absolutely, and I think I think there's a reason we haven't. And I, <laughs> and I don't think it's just because it's expensive. I uh, hope it's a like spaceship. That, uh, it would be a huge relief. Yeah, you know? that is still my favorite tweet, though the whole moon's haunted one. <laughs> yeah, you have seen that one? No. Yeah, the. Uh, the Oh, yeah. There's just somebody tweeted. It might have been drill or something, but basically, yeah. The the whole thing was like, um, uh, shit. I'll have to look it up. Hold on. The yeah, oh, the NASA employee. Oh, yeah. hey, you guys are back early. Astronaut moons haunted. NASA employee. What? Astronaut loading a pistol and getting back on the rock. <laughs> moons haunted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why the gun would help. I love it. I love it. That's why I loved it. For so many reasons. Like, first first and foremost, guns don't work in space. (laughs) Second, that's equally important. I don't think they work on ghosts. Like, the established canon of what a ghost is, shouldn't that not work? And the astronaut should know that, too, which also is funny to me. I think you could could put a space suit around the gun and fire through the (laughs) helmet. You could get single shots around that. I mean, I think I'm getting that from an episode of Firefly, but it sounded convincing. (laughs) Um, I got a Hondo P watch. Oh, shit. Here it comes. Gotta reach for it. Any moment go. now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, this is gonna suck a little bit because I can't actually provide a picture for this, but my students gave me a koosh ball with eyes. And you mentioned they mentioned that last time, yeah. And yeah, and they named him Hondo P. Mm-hmm. Oh, Whiskey Matt said that. That's not me. I wasn't. I didn't, <laughs> oh, sorry, Whiskey Matt. Whiskey Matt might have, have stolen your thunder here. But Hondo P. Uh, ended up the Koosh Ball. The Koosh Ball. Uh, he ended up inside a skeleton that we were drawing, uh, who we named Barry the Bone Lord uh, for Barry life Lord. drawing. We yeah. brought in a, a, a medical skeleton. And he ended yep. up in his uh, pelvis, and that's where Hondo P lives Aww. in Barry the Bone Lord's pelvis, near where his bladder would, uh, in fact, uh, uh, sit. So, uh, Does Hond- his, is his bladder been displaced in favor of Hondo P? Well, I mean, uh, he never had one because he was he's well, he did probably at one point, <laughs> but Barry the Bone Lord now only has one organ, and it's Hondo P. Oh, and okay. uh, that's I'm just it's a good gonna, organ if you have to choose one. Yeah, yeah. If I, I'm anyway, I'm just gonna I'm keeping you guys updated. Hard to pee without it. Uh, yep, hard to pee without it. Um, Hundo P. Hundo P. Watch. Can you play? Can you play, can you play I, it I again thought, one more time? I thought for sure you were gonna play it. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the college I worked at had an anatomy skeleton, which I briefly had with me here in Halifax. Uh. Because I had a motion capture suit rigged up to it because I had to do a lot of testing and I couldn't climb in and out of the suit all the time. So there was just a skeleton <laughs> wearing a motion capture suit in my office. It would be great. Uh, <laughs> That's excellent. That's absurd. The, 
because it, it, the the <laughs> students it it didn't it didn't work great either. It was just it enabled me to have something yeah. that articulated like a human that was oh, wearing sure. the suit yeah. for very rudimentary tests. <laughs> Uh, the students um, named the skeleton, and the predominantly female population at the school voted unanimously for Skelehor. <laughs> <laughs> that seems also like a derogatory name someone might have called Skeletor. <laughs> I love Skele- Skelehor. That's good. It is really good. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, just more more skeleton notes. Anyway, yeah, the, the thanks everybody. Thanks for that. Are we ready for more mm-hmm. questions? This has been Hundo P Watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, listen, we gotta since we're on the Hundo P Watch. <laughs> uh, I gotta I gotta address. I'm gonna be cursing myself on Friday night when I have to edit out those brief alt tabs. <laughs> No, 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 you don't. You don't. Uh, I, I'm going to read uh, the um, the uh, the comment from Landon, who did this to us. Um, sure. <laughs> who did this to <laughs> us. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, I've done a lot of hilarious things in my life, but the Billy Mitchell affair is quite possibly the funniest thing I've ever done. I agree. Uh, while I want to apologize for the discomfort I caused, it would be entirely insincere. Billy Mitchell's avant-garde pep talk was ma- was made even more delightful by your visceral repulsion to what he recorded. <laughs> I want to somehow frame this entire series and submit it to an art gallery. Look, I agree. Has it been 30 days yet? Oh, I imagine. It's, we're getting close, if not. Let me look at I up. was... I was concerned that we would like have a bunch of smack talk about Billy Mitchell, but honestly, we've been too uncomfortable to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so certainly, nothing to apologize for, and we won't even ask you to use your powers for good. You know, that's not that's not a request we would ever make. But uh, you know, I having interacted with Landon a bit on Discord, I I I feel like he's not going to go out of his way to make people too uncomfortable. Right. Oh. Like. Holy shit. It's exactly from this day, 30 days. Oh, my God. Oh, Oh my God. Well, if you're watching, Billy Mitchell, thank you for your cameo. We enjoyed listening to your cameo. And we love we love you. (laughs) You truly are the 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 king of Kong, the king of Kong. (laughs) You're. Luke, would you like to add anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> Julia? Ah. Uh, I think you said everything that needs to be said. I have, I have gone out of my way after being inspired by your words to spread Hundo P all over the globe, and it hasn't worked. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't a hard effort. No. No, I, I yeah, I held myself back. I'm sorry. Anyway, I just want to do I wanted to address that uh, also by the time he's checking it out today. This is not going to be out until the next day. Mm-hmm. So. It's true. Sorry. You know. It's currently 12:28 in the morning here and in in Halifax, Nova Scotia local time. Uh Friday, April 5th, 2024. Yep. And uh Billy Mitchell's cameo came in on uh, March 5th, 2024 at 10.53 p.m. Mm. So. I. (laughs) So he might miss it by a day. He might miss it by a day. He might miss this. So we can say whatever the fuck we want. Sorry we missed you, Billy, Mm -hmm. but, you know. I hope you liked what you saw. Yeah. I mean, not really. You can you can like it or dislike it. Like it's not going to change. That, what's, that one is pretty evident, considering how much opportunity we've had to do better <laughs> over the last oh five <laughs> six years. Also, I think I think I it, honestly like having Billy Mitchell do that to me is one of my it's it's a it's a to good you. thing. It's a story I'm going to tell mm-hmm. to yeah, you. Of my life. 
Yeah, he did, yeah, did he it. Did it to me. Yeah. You. yeah, he did. He did it at you. I feel victimized, yeah. but I, in a good way. <laughs> victimized in a good way. You know? I think I think it is I think what it is is that Landon did it to you. Yes. Yeah, and Landon Billy Mitchell did it a gun for money. And the bullet was Billy Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> the bullet was Billy Mitchell. Hmm. If you guys want to know what we're talking about, join our Discord today. Yeah, it's there. I th- it might be pinned. It is that expression. Oh. Uh, cameos don't kill people. Landon kills people with cameos. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. The first thing I did when I saw it is I uh, went downstairs and I showed my wife. Mm. <laughs> what did she say? Like, this is... She's like, "Oh God!" <laughs> like, I know, right? It's amazing. I, uh, yeah, um, I I shared it with the community manager at Beamdog. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, you know, I I shared it with no one, and I told no one. <laughs> I I told my partner only because uh, she happened to walk by and see it over my shoulder, <laughs> and I had to explain why I was watching Billy Mitchell deliver a cameo to Matt. <laughs> it's amazing. I honestly forgot who Billy Mitchell was beforehand. I had mistaken him for somebody else. I was like, oh yeah, he was he was the villain in that one movie, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, whatever. I mean, but then when yes, this is the movie was King of Kong. <laughs> then when he introduced himself as the King of Kong, I was like, oh no, why would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through the reactions uh, for that that actual cameo. Uh, or are there reactions on it? Like, are they just public and people no, can watch them? No, th- th- these are the private no reactions reason. from the Discord. We oh, have I see. Yes, three fearful, three hundo <laughs> peas. Oh, the emotes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I reacted flushed. <laughs> and uh, you know, understandable. Bunny cakes gave it a heart, but that's that's you know. That's some classic bunny cakes. Yeah. You know. I think I dropped that uh, emote that's either like you you did sick or scared. Yeah, you did. You were one of the you were one of the three who did the uh, who did the uh, fearful (laughs) react. (laughs) It's a nuanced expression. The fearful emoji. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's gold. I love it. It's one of the nicest things that ever mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Nicest is not the word. It's one of the most things that ever it's happened. It's one of the channel. most things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's that's Landon, mm-hmm. aberrant and yeah. unpredictable. Um, all right, everybody. Was was it Landon saying that uh, his kids are making him an aberrant and unpredictable T-shirt or coffee yeah, mug? Yeah, or something yeah, yeah, something like that. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm I'm delighted that he's bringing the whole family into it and that they're also delighted by his antics. So we love it. We love good. it. Yeah. Uh, Landon recently agreed with me on Discord that E.T. is a horrifying, disgusting monster. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I watched E.T. when I was four and I e. thought he was lovable. E.T. the extraterrestrial? Lovable. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I, I despised him as a child. I stand by that conviction now. Good movie good movie it's not even it's not even a problem with the character the character of et is fine there's nothing wrong with the character nothing wrong with the movie but uh, as i was saying on the discord if legitimately if it was the thing from the thing i would have an easier time empathizing with it i don't i don't i don't remember what is it that. about et that makes it so despicable to yeah. you yeah i've talked about it on the show before yeah. but uh he he looks he looks like he's made out of like uh, sausage casings or shit. Like he he looks he looks like an earthworm, and you see his pulsating, glowing organs under the thin, translucent membrane of his just brown, leathery skin. And it's not like a human brown; it's like a yellowy, awful brown. You know, it's very alien. Yeah, it's just. Why did they decide to give him a texture somewhere in between earthworm and human shit? I I think E.T.'s beautiful. 
It's, yeah, as I said on the Discord, everything about him screams to me, if you touch this creature, you will become sick. I wanted to touch I wanted, <laughs> I, I saw him when I was four, oh my and gosh. I wanted to touch him. You know the scene where E.T.'s all, like, pale on the table mm -hmm. and dying? Yeah, yeah, that that was terrifying, actually. You're right. No, that uh, was one of the worst things I've ever part, seen yeah, in my life. Yeah. People, yeah. people yeah. reacted with, like, pity and sadness. <laughs> it just deepened my revulsion. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. It must have rained. I do not pity you. You disgust me. <laughs> well, it's it's not that I wanted bad things to happen to E.T. I just wanted him gone, you know? <laughs> I just wanted him gone. Well, I then, wanted him away. Then, I wanted, like, I hope he's safe and flourishing somewhere. Yeah. I... I truly did want him to go the fuck home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love... It's just not motivated for the normal reason. I didn't have a problem with E.T., but I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry you did. I'm glad that uh, that kid Elliot made a friend, but his friend was fucking disgusting. Uh, you see, the thing is, is you, you were judging E.T. based on his appearance. <laughs> 100%. And you just needed to look inside his heart, which was real easy, because it just glowed yeah, right through his ribcage. Because it was showing cage. through the thin <laughs> sausage casing of his puppet skin amazing it's really really well done really well done <sighs> um the original et is falling apart though There's, he's got holes in him i and, imagine yeah like that yeah. that those kinds of of puppets don't last for a very <clears throat> long no. time They're it very, brings me no joy to imagine that life. that monstrosity decaying because <laughs> i imagine it's only <laughs> more horrifying now yeah and his he actually his legs could extend too? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, could no. they? I forgot that. Yeah, he could rise up a little bit, oh. and his legs would extend out of his uh, his uh, pulch there, his situation. I thought his. Pulch. I didn't realize his legs could extend. I thought it was just his his disgusting sort of tracheal intestinal throat that extended. Yeah, his neck um, could definitely get longer. Yeah. Uh, his his neck definitely could get longer. Yeah, but he he had a lot of extendable situations uh, there. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Did Henry Thomas do much between E.T. and, like, uh, Haunting of Hill House? Because I have no memory of seeing him between those two points in time. Oh, <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about Henry Thomas. He's probably just one of those actors, you know? Like, James Vanderbeek's hardly taken a day off since Dawson's Creek, but I only know, like, two things that he's been in. <laughs> Henry Thomas was the youngest son in the movie called The Movie There with Brad Pitt. You guys remember? You guys remember who I mean? I Legends don't. of the Fall. Legends of the Fall. He played okay. the youngest son Legends in Legends of the Fall. And he died in that movie. Spoilers. Spoilers. Aww. Spoilers. And then the other two brothers fought about his wife for a long time. Um, you know. What else? What else? Uh, no, sh no, sh no shade to James Vanderbeek, by the way. Just because I don't know most of the things that he's been in. He's made like a solid long career of being an actor. And he was hilarious in the show... Uh, that bitch from Apartment 23. He plays a fictional version of himself, who is like a, a monster, basically. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm a, really well done. I, I'm, I'm a fan of actors who play themselves as just mm -hmm, awful mm -hmm, versions of themselves. Yeah. I think it was you, Alex, that turned me on to uh, Jean-Claude Van Johnson. <laughs> yeah. He played a very Jean-Claude Van Johnson version of himself. Yeah. Or like Nick Cage in the unbearable weight of or whatever that, that the title of the film was with. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that one, but uh, the unbearable massive burden talent. of talent. Maybe, yeah, a maybe massive you, talent or something like that. Yeah. Maybe you guys have seen a little movie called Gangs in New York. He was in that one. Okay. Which yeah. person? He was a person in that. Which which He's actor? Person in that. Oh oh sorry no uh, I'm sorry I'm still on Henry Thomas. Still. Good no I, you, you that is that is correct that's the thread you were on yeah yeah no yeah. I'm still I'm still there sorry yeah yeah 
It would have been it would have been a disservice to him to jump ship to the James <laughs> Vanderbeek conversation. Yeah, yeah. I I Henry Thomas Get with the program, Matt, we're in the Beakiverse now. <laughs> the Beakiverse. <laughs> I, I I find that if you Not hear even the actor, beak, just beak. When you see, when you see an actor as like a child or a young adult, and then you see them again like decades later as an adult in something else, they've probably been working the whole time. It's just you oh know, yeah, there's yeah. lots of shows and movies. Is there for James short Bander. round? Oh yeah, I That's guess he did take a bit off there. Yeah, yeah. You guys He's ever, great. You guys ever see uh, Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23? Or were you just talking about that? That's the one. I I, I got the title wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one you were talking I about. I haven't seen it, but I'm aware mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a riot. It's great. It's really good. Um. Anyway, yeah, that wasn't a question, but that's all right. We got E.T. is one of those things. That was your yeah. question for glory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Um, do we have a... I'd, oh, okay. I'd like to we... think that James Vanderbeek's nickname with his friends is Beak, or The Beak. The Beak, The yeah. Beakster. The Beakster. <laughs> Jimmy Beaks. I will always read the first episode first, so episode 15. Yep. Fun for Algernon. says, uh, I need an Amon, a- an Amon Ranser. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting worse. Go on. Uh, ha, uh, have you got any plans involving the upcoming eclipse? Except for maybe Luke. Sorry, Luke. Here in Sorry, Ottawa, what? guys. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Okay, you're over there, right? The eclipse yeah, is not going anywhere because, near you. Yeah. Uh, here in Ottawa, it's possible to drive an hour south towards the St. Lawrence River in order to see the total eclipse, as Nikki French taught me in 1993. <laughs> I, I got that. I got that. Uh, though perhaps Bonnie Tyler taught you earlier. Mm. Uh, both both uh, classic versions. I have a hard time picking which one's my favorite. I think it's the Bonnie Tyler. You didn't ask that, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, listen. Uh, a lot of people are telling me to not go to work that day and close my blinds and don't interact with anyone on the day of the eclipse. Same day for me then, you know. <laughs> but I gotta go for to work. F- my, uh... For why? Oh, why not interact with people during the eclipse? Just because, you know, it's the end of the world. People are gonna <laughs> short circuit and kill each other. Right. Because you know. our actions are determined by the movements of celestial yeah. bodies. Yeah, yeah. And you know, maybe the moon's a spaceship. We don't know. <laughs> and it's going to destroy the sun. Mm-hmm. And it's going to uh, destroy the sun. The, uh, because uh, the sun is a different, bigger spaceship. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I have a certain fear of eclipses. Not like a significant one, but when I was a kid, I think it was my mother, who was an otherwise level-headed individual, one year had like a, was really concerned that we would all go out and stare at the eclipse, which is super bad for your eyes, but like doesn't, you don't necessarily know that you're damaging your eyes when you stare at an eclipse is the problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so she was like really worried that we would look at the eclipse and really drilled into us not to. And to this day, I do feel a compulsion to hide inside of my mm-hmm. home and shut all the windows <laughs> when there is an eclipse as if it's like harmful to be in the actual light of the eclipse, <laughs> not just to look at the actual sun. So it's it's irrational, but it's 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 real in there. It's some Mom childhood shit. Did a good job at yeah, that. Yeah, good though. for her. Yeah, it's like <laughs> might have gone a little overboard, <laughs> but I mean, better to, for you to just like completely isolate yourself from any opportunity to hurt your eyes mm-hmm. with the eclipse, mm-hmm. than you know put yourself in a situation where you might end up looking up and staring at the sun's corona and destroying mm-hmm. your. Retinas. Yeah. The 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 eclipse cannot hurt you if you're locked inside a sem- sensory <laughs> deprivation tank like a fucking yeah, vampire. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's what everybody's telling you to do. Oh, we're gonna heat. We're gonna hit <laughs> p- uh, peak. I think he- we're not we're not right in the path, but we're we're close to mm-hmm. get like a good chunk of it. Still, it's gonna get pretty dark here. It's not gonna get real dark though. Partial uh, eclipse. Partial eclipse. Most in a, of an eclipse. It's like you know seven like i think it's like 80 or 90 percent mm-hmm. anyway uh we're gonna be yeah around like 4 30 
438, 20 to 5 locally here. So It's so weird to me the way that people will like make one of those like boxes with the slit to try to find a safe way to look at the eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Just don't look at mm -hmm. it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. People people were saying on the news the other day, yeah, when it's in full eclipse, you can just look at it. <laughs> mm, right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's oh, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. That's great. You said you got. They they say you got like four minutes. You can just look at it. I'm like okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Science. yeah, I'm in Toronto, which like yeah, it's kind of in that path of I should have a good. I don't. I'm not. I don't. Not that interested. I'm afraid. <laughs> I just, I, well, and also, yeah, I mean, I don't like the idea of je like the idea of jeopardizing any part of my eyesight. Um, that doesn't appeal to me. So I'm just gonna let it pass me by. It's fine. I think if you, uh, why don't you just look for a second? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Like if it's a total eclipse, I can look at it safely, right? So you could look at it safe. Scientists were saying that. I'm just saying you could look at also. <laughs> Right. G glancing at the sun doesn't hurt you, and it's not more dangerous during an eclipse. So yeah. if you glance at it to see what it looks like, I'm sure it will be fine. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm do not it, gonna do but it. You, you feel. No. You feel free. I, I got the Lazac on my eyes. I'm not gonna mess this stuff up. It costs thousands of dollars. Um, no, forget it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, my eyes are my eyes are fine. They're deteriorating at an acceptable rate for the rate. They only have to last me like another few decades, right? So like, yeah, I'm not going to hasten that. Yeah, like I've got an eye appointment in September and, you know, I don't want him to ask me, did you look at the eclipse? Is this why your eyes are fried now? And I don't want to have to say, yeah. I no. Yeah. I did. I know I wasn't supposed I did, to, but. Yeah. I stole a cheeky mm. glance at the eclipse and its hypnotic properties caused me to stare at it for three hours. Yeah, now my entire <laughs> livelihood is destroyed. So that was a good decision on my part. So thanks. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I, you know, I, I think it's fun that people are interested and excited to see something, you know, and they're actually people are going to travel down to Niagara Falls to see it because that's supposed to be primo place. And I'm sure it's going to really help the, the economy in town for a little while and all that. So that's all good. All good stuff. Um, I'm not going to trust a pair of five dollar eclipse glasses to protect my vision. <laughs> Because they even did a thing on the news where like, oh yeah, here's a way you could test these. Like you can put your your camera like a flashlight up, and if the thing is completely blacked out except for the red other dot, then you it should be should be fine. But we're certainly not going to make any guarantees. And like, well, I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah, the, the eclipse the eclipse viewing setup has never sounded like science to me. It just sounds like something that people tell themselves, you know. But then again, like, I'm not really justifying my stance on, like, a scientific level. I'm just choosing to succumb to animal fear and hide inside <laughs> too, away from me it. Me too, whatever, man. I, I just think we, my plan is, I got to drive to my evening class on Monday. So I'm going to be driving to my class during the, mm. the height of the fucking eclipse. I get to drive in the dark. Yay. I think you should roll down your window, scream, and veer into the other lane when the uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, everybody's saying that's like going to happen anyway. Like a caveman in the apocalypse. Okay, yeah, what, what I'll just be one of them. What day is that? It's interesting yeah. that we all have dread for such different reasons. Because logistically, like logically, I think Matt's going to be fine. I have many reasons to suspect that he will be fine. Even if he's driving like towards where the sun is, I'm pretty confident he won't accidentally stare at it. Um, but at the same time, I do find myself very worried that you have to drive to work in the middle of the eclipse. <laughs> Me too. I, it's actually not even work. It's my it's my uh, training class to learn how to become a teacher that I've been doing for three years. Solar Eclipse Toronto. Let's see. Eighth. Let me write this down in my planner so I know when to not look at the window. Uh, Toronto time. Let's see here. Everybody's going <laughs> to... So to answer your question, everybody's going to be avoiding the clips like the like the plague here. I yeah, guess. yeah. We're, Except for we're, me because we're... it's going to pass me by entirely. Yeah, You're not good even for you. Know. Not that I not that I sit and pay attention to an open window anywhere, <laughs> uh, during my work day. So yeah, I guess the only scientific aspect to my fear of the eclipse is the idea that I like looking at it is bad for your eyes. So it's like I fear that somehow I will be compelled to look <laughs> at it if I go outside, which is just pure superstition. There's no substance to that. Uh, it would be like standing in a high place. You have that yeah, weird it, well, compulsion exactly. to jump. So why don't we just, you know, oh, remove yeah. that, you know. La pelle de vie. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I interact with most things as scientifically as I can. That's one, oh, 
I just uh, can't do it. Well, yeah, I mean, I get that sometimes. Where are you driving in on the highway? Like, I could just wrench this steering wheel really quickly and firmly to one side. Oh, intrusive thoughts are great. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, I don't, you know, so that's not, it's not like I'm going to, but it's just like, why don't I just, I, and, but I have to drive sometimes, so yeah, I'll still do that, whatever. But um, yeah, like, I'm not going to invite that into my life if I don't have to, so why not? Like, I'm not, I'm not interfering with my own, you know, like, lifestyle necessarily if it was ruining my life maybe i'd try to combat that but there's no need yeah like if if the world does end and matt needs backup out on the you know apocalyptic streets of halifax i might venture out to make sure he gets Mm -hmm. home safe you know he's got kids and Mm -hmm. stuff it'll be dartmouth just leave me (laughs) (laughs) Just leave It'll, me to I die. Think I'll, 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 I'll try to get out there. It'll take me a bit. Because the, the people of Dartmouth thought maybe feral, but they are also malnourished. Oh, you know? no. So I think there's a good chance that we can... We don't have any... We don't have any from like Dartmouth. Like ailing wolves. Haligonians in Dartmouth are kind of like John Carter from Mars. You know? <laughs> John Carter from Mars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, there, so there you go. Yeah. No plans. Shots nope. fired across the basin. We don't have any. For anyone out there who thought that Dartmouth was just part of Halifax, you're not really wrong. It, it is, it is. It's, <laughs> it, it is. We like to shit it's on part Dartmouth. of the regional municipality. Although, although, I'm gonna be honest, I was going to class the other day because, and, and, and I have a, a leather bag. And as I was going up the escalator, some guy in Dartmouth was coming down the stairs and he looked at me and he's like, that's a nice satchel. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. Like, uh, okay. as fun as it is to give Dartmouth shit, Halifax is a shithole. It is it is such a shithole. Like, I, I love this city. I came back because I like, I love Halifax. All my friends were here. Um, it's a shithole. It's, it's getting fucking unlivable. There's tents wherever there's a bare patch of ground. It's, yeah. I, I will say, though, that um, I, I've heard from people in terms of like when you're traveling around places and stuff, um, in some places, the idea of actually saying to someone like something like that's a nice satchel and things like that, that basically is meaning that they they, they want you to give it to them. <laughs> you know, like, the idea is there's just actually, that is most likely yeah, that yeah. is literally yeah. the feeling I got. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, there is a non-zero chance that the person just wanted to give a yeah. compliment to some random nope, stranger no. about a piece of, of our, uh, you know, like, um, I was going to say artillery, but that was not even remotely the correct, an accessory <laughs> this guy, that you were carrying. This but. guy had three teeth in his mouth and uh-huh. a backwards cap, and from the top of the stairs that he was coming down, he was doing this... <laughs> Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he saw me and he said, "Nice satchel." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, no, he probably he probably just meant to compliment me. Yeah. It's fine. Luke makes a good point in that a person is not necessarily evil just because they have bad vibes. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It doesn't matter how you make people feel. Like if you make a person uncomfortable with your actions, that still matters. That's still an action oh, in yeah, and of no, itself. Absolutely. So, yeah. I was saying, like, we don't know intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally fair. We do not know this person's mens rea when he wanted to compliment your satchel. It could be, like, that he wanted to take it. It could be that he wanted you to volunteer it. It could be that he just was, he just liked Mm -hmm. it and needed to, and felt compelled to. What was that term just now, Luke? Mens rea. Mens rea. I don't know that one. I do. I probably misused it. It's a legal term. Uh, no, I think he used it correctly. It's a cool yeah. term. I didn't know that one. The intention or knowledge of wrongdoing that constitutes part of a crime, as opposed yeah. to the action or the conduct of the accused. Yeah, there you go. Like Motive, it. basically. Yeah. Oh, there are three types of mens rea, types of mens rea, levels of culpability, intent, knowledge, recklessness, and negligence. Interesting. Really yeah. cool. Interesting. Well, anyway, he didn't rob me because I was going up an escalator. He was going down the stairs. Mm. And I ignored him. Also, I'm like, you know, six foot two. And You're a bad mark. Yeah, You're a bad I, mark. I, I, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be smart. But, yeah. you know, it's fine. 
like height, reach, mass. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I think he made that. I think he made that choice, and you know, kept giggling his way down the stairs. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh. Okay. Uh. New New Colonel's be question. Um. Landon Landon has asked us uh, you are a crawd faller T. Rhubarb and you have been assigned to write a human interest story about Ziggy (laughs) what's the headline this would be easier if we were post Ziggy's death. I don't know for sure that Ziggy <laughs> dies. I assume most of these characters are here to die because it's a murder mystery. Um, because then we could just be like, you know, bitten by Cobra. Doopy doopy doo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, special interest story, so. Oh. Yeah. From shady to spotlight. Yeah, I was gonna say something like that, like Weasel, you know, makes good or something, right? Like Weasel makes good. L- L- local speakeasy proprietor for some reason attends museum gala. Doopy doopy doo. <laughs> for some reason dies at museum gala. Doopy doopy doo. Is there a term God, for the proprietor of speakeasy? Guys? Well, I, you know, we're all just assuming. Actually, I don't know for sure, so... Spoilers! Mm. Spoilers! Uh, I have the password for a speakeasy in Halifax. Oh, what is it? Yeah, yeah what is it? It changes every week. They email it to oh, you. Oh, what's it this week? I don't know. I don't check oh. the email and I never go. Oh. Why are you on this mailing list? It's in the basement of the Middle Spoon... And uh, my boss told me that if you clicked at a place on the website, it would give you a thing. And then there was like a series of steps that if you had that and an invitation, you could get the speakeasy password. And when he said it to me, it was like a kid in grade Mm -hmm. school claiming they knew a way to catch Mm -hmm. Mew and Pokemon Mm -hmm. Red. And uh, so I just tried it and then I did. And now I get the, the bluff and it worked. Yeah, it's just he was act. It was actually just a tip. It's kind of cool. You can get like fancy cocktails and stuff. Um, where I don't drink, it's kind of just the same desserts you can order upstairs, plus drinks you can't order right. upstairs. Uh, right. But it's fun for like a date night kind of thing. There's something I feel That's like cool. that goes against the spirit of it. Like that it's a mailing list that <laughs> that you just get automatically sent every month. I mean, it's a very efficient way of doing it. Um, you get sent every week. Yeah, it's yeah, it's easier than having to ask your local newsie. Yeah, the, uh, I just I, I kind of wish there know? was a bit of that. You know, yeah, you may, I kind of wish you did have to ask your local newsie about it. Found it. Yeah, I see. I see what that you mean. That would be it's... hard because of the, all the local <laughs> newsies are being laid off because of AI. Oh, yeah. It's it's an interesting sort of tidbit of like internet mm-hmm. stuff where it's like oh you click at this place on the website and that's how you get the password and that's how you get the speakeasy password and the digital component makes it relatively low effort. Well, for maybe them. if you had to go um, every time and click on the thing and then get the like get the password, but the fact that there's a mailing list kind of like weird feels weird for yeah. something that's supposed to be really clandestine. You want it to be hard every time. Yeah, because otherwise, like then the police can get their hands on that list and you know you're all going to the pokey or whatever. You, you want I'm, you want to you want to solve a puzzle every well, time. I, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty work sure at this point speakeasy is not illegal. <laughs> well, I mean, just to keep up that fun part of the fact that it's supposed to be, you know, like no one in their right mind would want to be on the mailing list for the speakeasy password, right? In real life, because if it was illegal, then you got that paper trail. Sure. It was sort yeah. of comforting after the pandemic ended and the speakeasy reopened that I still got the mm-hmm. password when they were sending them out. It was just this moment of like, huh, yeah, sun's coming out, the world's recovering. I I found it. Okay. I got it. Yeah? Don't, Did you get it? I got it. Easy password? Okay. You gotta, it's it's not that, yeah, you don't, you don't have to be Batman. It's not that well hidden. You just, you gotta, you gotta, as soon as you told me to click on something, <laughs> I yeah. just, I found the thing that looked the most suspicious to click on. Yeah, you click around a bit. Basically, the entire process is once you know there's something to look for, the puzzle becomes relatively easy. What's to the password? Solve. Yeah, I'm like, of. I have to know. Okay, well, I'm entering my email okay, address okay. right now. All right. Oh, I can probably log into my email here. 
It's a race to see whether Matt you're, or Alex can you're, get the you're speakeasy my loud password ass first. Keyboard. I have to pick what a bus is. The only <laughs> constant in life is change. That's a that's not a okay. word. That's the password. That's that's the passphrase. Uh, right. But you actually have to. I've I've only gone to the speakeasy once, uh, and you have to go up to the person, and say, "The only constant in life is change," and. When I did it, the the person working really let me hang for like three calendar seconds before saying, come this way and sending me downstairs. And that moment of embarrassment and dread was felt very oh, authentic. Oh God, that sounds terrible. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you, you've sold me on never doing yeah, this just much. now from, from that one description. Yeah. Like that guy has I a little bit of power, human right? Interaction in yeah, the he's first got that place, little bit yeah. of power, and he, like, he loves it. A little bit of power. Yeah. He sensed that I was a real square and had never done anything like it. <laughs> and he, he he just deadpan face looked at me for three mm. seconds and let me feel like I uh, was an idiot. Just I, really let me stew in there for a minute and then smiled. No, and said, no, Come I don't play way. that. No, I would have turned around and left. <laughs> like, no, you don't. No, we don't do this this way. Full mm -hmm. retreat. Bye. Break a glass yep. and leave. Yeah. I would have raised my eyebrow <laughs> and just turned around and left. <laughs> In video game terms, that would have been a quick load for you. <laughs> yeah, <I wasn't>. <laughs> <laughs> FH, yeah. no yes, to that. that you just quest. come in and yeah. shoot him yeah, I'll instead. just watch the Let's Play on YouTube with that one, because I'm not going to do this one. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Not, no. That really annoys me. <laughs> I'm down. I'll play along. I'll do it. I'm in. I, I <laughs> Can just know. imagine if we all came as a group and that happened, and I'm like, no. And then Matt's like, no, yes, I'm totally in. I'm like, <laughs> we got to do it. Luke, are when, you are you, you in or when out? You come down here. Oh, when are we having? I mean, I meant to bring this up. Sorry. When are we having NPC con? Oh my god. NPC con. Level zero con. Okay. So I'm gonna be releasing my game probably late summer. Or ish. So I'm not. I don't want to come to the Maritimes in friggin' fall and winter. That sounds horrible. Um, whoa, whoa. Well, because of all the falls. snow. I know about the snow there. You know. Fall's fine. Fall's fine. Winter sucks. Winter. Yeah, winter fall sucks. Maybe fall. There. Maybe fall. But the, yeah, like it kind of depends on yeah how the game. Nova Scotia is kind of normal until like the end of November. Okay. Okay, I might be able to do that after like post launch maybe, Chilly. or like at least but maybe like ne not, not uh, next next the following you know spring or summer or something. Like, what's a nice let's, time to let's, visit? Let's um, like, God, August is so fucking humid. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest. Yeah, I would. I would actually uh, honestly September okay. like l like the late later half of September, okay. the early part of October are the best times to come. And if you plan like a year out, mm -hmm. maybe we can put out the call <laughs> to any uh, PCs. Oh my god! To and anybody who wants to come, and for I some reason fly to, fly to Nova Halifax, Scotia. We'll have a we'll have a little we'll get a little venue. Oh my god! Okay, we'll do yes. some misery tourism in oh my Nova god. Scotia. We'll uh, we'll we'll have some drinks for those who drink, and we'll chill. We'll hang. It'll be fun. We'll have a we'll have a classic maritime kitchen party. Hmm. Come come over to my house. We'll be so up for we'll, that. We'll have fun. Yeah. yeah, my house is fine. My house is great. I'll even clean up. When I first started working for working with Matt, he would sing little songs to himself like he still Aww. does, and the lyrics would always stray to something along the lines of "Come over to my house and stay there forever." <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a permanent invitation. Mm -hmm. It was come to my house, you can never leave, kind of like a Hotel mm -hmm. California situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he later did actually invite me to his house, which was disquiet. Yeah, I was gonna say you it was like, Can yeah, I leave yeah. after? Is it permanent? <laughs> you can come over to my house, but you're never leaving here. You guys are gonna love it. You can love it. Come over to my house. I want to. Uh, if you guys, if you guys ever do find your way back to Halifax, uh, yeah, I'll take you to the speakeasy. It'd I don't want to go there. We'll, do it. we'll all Not go. Going. No, no, no. Oh, You're... well, I'll, 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 I'll do the password if that helps. If he does the same pause yeah. though, I, I'll be like, "You're still doing the pause." That... I'll say that. Oh, 
it, it was one guy, one con. I'll even do a dry run if you want to make sure it's not a shit show, if that's the concern. Or we could just not go. I didn't mean to make it sound that horrible. Oh, but I just, um, ooh, yeah. I, I wasn't even, I wasn't, I wasn't that affronted by it. I was kind of like, you got me. I'm, I'm kind of a square. No, don't make me feel that way. That, that, if, you, if someone makes me feel that way, they're just, an enemy for life. It's just, it's just, it's just kind of like, yeah, you got me. I felt cool there for a second, and now I don't. Well played. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I don't. Oh, you've, you've, you've sort of ruined this for me. Congratulations. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. We, hey, we got an uh, yes, en enemy for life. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm just sorry. You're not even as a, like a fun. No, I've I've got plenty of hard no's of my own for that kind of thing. Like, I, yeah, I always like try to go about my life in a way that doesn't harm other people or doesn't like make other people uncomfortable and everything. So if, even as a joke, if you, if someone is like if someone I don't know, like a complete stranger, like pulls one of those, it's like mm -mm, I'm not doing this. It might have been genuine confusion. How could that possibly right? be have one job? For all I know, it was the guy's first day and it was like, why did this person quietly say okay. a weird phrase it's to me? Oh, that must be the speakeasy Yeah, on password. the first day that, that could have of, been your, the interaction. of your job as gatekeeper to speakeasy, like, I would feel like they would tell you what the phrase was and say, this is your only job. You have to stand here. Wait until someone tells you the thing. <laughs> and then they come and open the door and you let them in. And, and maybe you want to go to give a dramatic pause or something like that. I mean, that's... That's the extent of the training, I would think, for this. I love this so much. Julia has such a deep, deep it's anger. Disgusting. It's disgusting. It disgusts me. <laughs> it's so stupid. I just would be so angry at that point. I mean... I feel bad to have caused you no, this no, no, distress. No, no. I didn't no. mean for it it's to not, be an incendiary It's not your fault. It's that person's fault. It's the management's <laughs> fault for, like, training their employees to just, you know, like gaslight people for three seconds into thinking like embarrassed feeling embarrassed when they didn't feel it's that completely not justified this is so what, the, this is why we need the, to get together uh, this is this is great this is gold We're, yeah we'll 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 go and if he pulls that shit we'll just kick the <laughs> shit out of him. yeah yeah exactly exactly uh, um because I'm just imagining the scenarios because it could if it's the same guy then yeah obviously but I mean if it's somebody else and you're like oh it's a different person so maybe you know they might not do the thing and if they do the thing it'd be even worse because that means they explicitly do tell everyone to to do that you know I actually think the whole operation had a regime change mid pandemic I'm not sure about that but I think the middle spoon slash the speakeasy called the noble might have like changed hands their menu is different now better than it used to be so you know it's unlikely that guy's still there. Be a hell of a thing, though, if he was there and it did the exact same thing and then Julia <laughs> killed him. <laughs> and he doesn't even know yeah. that that he's her nemesis. He doesn't he doesn't know that's about to happen. He just forgot for a second that he lives in a world full of frightening strangers who might be capable of anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just any any type of scenario of it, it just it is really funny to me. Because if it's just the same guy, you, you'll have a look on your face and I'll say, is that the guy? <laughs> 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 you'll, you'll probably say something like, you know, maybe I should go over and just check if, you know, that's a thing he does. And maybe you'd go over and surreptitiously ask him if he does that pause and he'll say no. But to mess with you, when we do do it, he says he gives the stupid pause. And then <laughs> it feels like the best situation here would be if we all sort of hang back, hung out, you know, <laughs> far enough away that Alex could go up to the guy, do the password, and he's like, follow me, and then you wave us over, kind of cool like mm -hmm. that when everyone But wins. then what if he was to stop us all and say we all had to do the passphrase? Then we get to kick the shit I out of him, think right? They would I feel like well, sure, like if he wants to like steal three seconds of everyone's <laughs> life like some kind of weird time vampire then yeah absolutely he you i know, think i went with vinny's to... niece and yeah. the person didn't make us both say the password well maybe so. for couples i feel like that would just be unnecessarily inefficient well sure but i'm just saying that he what... doesn't know that we're not some weird polycule <laughs> like you know he's <laughs> maybe it's like you know when it's a party of more than two people maybe that's like then you need to like break it up or whatever you know it's fun. we need it to be slower <laughs> I'll, do, I'll just say the password too <laughs> I now subscribed I'm no 
I'm... Matt will say it loud and weird. <laughs> yeah. In a way that upsets people. I actually, they won't give me the password for this week. What is it again? The password is, just in case any viewer is in Halifax, although uh, the... No, the password is good on Saturday, April well, why 6th. Why aren't they giving Matt the password? Uh, the only Pardon? constant thing in life is change? Is that correct? Yeah, the, the only constant in life is change, is the password uh, for the noble, the speakeasy under the middle spoon. Um, yeah. You have to find an employee in the middle spoon on Barrington Street. That is one other bit of mystique, is that there are multiple middle spoon locations and only one of them has a speakeasy. Uh, you approach them and say, the only constant in life is change, and the key is good Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. There you go. Why aren't they giving you the there key, you Matt? So you'll have to watch this episode, which airs at, at like <laughs> Saturday eight p.m. <laughs> so on Saturday in oh. Nova Scotia. Oh, no, it's it's good till two a.m. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, you have to you watch meet... this episode and then go there. Yeah. And you'll you have, have to coincidentally you know, already be here. Four and zero hours. I do to, not. Uh, yeah. Do we even have? Anybody from Halifax that watches, and we're like us. an hour in, so more like three hours. Did they give you a reason yeah. why they were like? Are they like you have to have seventy-two hours of subscription before we give you the password? Are they giving you like no? What is so this? They like they're like your subscription to our list has been confirmed. Uh -huh. Watch for emails oh. from us from this week's. They probably just fire out the email at one set point in time. So if you subscribe yeah, after, the if you're there, they'll give there. it to me on Sunday. I bet this is okay. Can I okay? I think that the speakeasy thing was like a like a trendy, fashionable thing in Toronto, maybe like five to seven years ago. Um, so we, yeah, that's that tracks for Halifax getting it now, and yep. so it's real cute, right? So that's nice yeah. that people are having a cute time, but this is not going to last, and um, that's good. This 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 was like five to seven oh, years ago it was like five to seven years ago when i went and it had been in operation for probably well, look five at that well, i guess they, they, they that. really persisted i guess they must have really good food or something because this stuff is just ah <laughs> some people the middle the, the the middle spoon i felt was overrated when okay. i first went but i have since gotten takeout mm -hmm. from there and it was better than i remembered it mm -hmm, being good. so i think they might have upped their yeah, game good. a little bit so some people just like to be dinked around some people just love it some people are like oh this is an experience for me that's true i keep forgetting i love it i i forget that there are people yeah that aren't like me and that that like all this you know you know so and so oh this is this is so lovely that relish so clandestine yeah. bullshit yeah, I, yeah mostly it's 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 a dessert place and they had an idea to have a speakeasy in the de uh, speakeasy downstairs where you can order fancy cocktails oh that's basically it you dress up fancy you go up for dessert but then ooh, you impress your date by having a password and there's fancy cocktails oh, downstairs mm. you know have you guys heard of my daughter rosella <laughs> <laughs> she is so special <laughs> Valenice, she would love speakeasies. Oh my god! Um, you know, no. you know. Also, like, I don't mean to sound like a noble speakeasy apologist either. It was a perfectly fine experience. I've gotten the password every single week for many, <laughs> many years, funny. and I went exactly. That, is, once. I, that doesn't I, amuse I, me. I'll go. I'm going. I'll go. I'm going. I'm go. I'll go. Matt and I will have a Matt and I will have a speakeasy. You guys should take yeah. pictures. Share, we share in Discord. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because Matt doesn't have the password now, so he's going to have to go with somebody who's in the know, you know. Uh, Alex and I had a uh, a Denny's date Aww. the other night. <laughs> we did. We went. We went. We went to Denny's at four a.m. I went to Denny's too <laughs> after that conversation. I was very disappointed. Well, it's been a while since I've been to a Denny's, but I was like, mm. yeah, I had a super bird, and I was like, this what's, was what's not... a super bird. It's like a turkey sandwich with like cheese okay. and <laughs> the bread. <laughs> is toasted in an unnecessary amount of butter so the whole thing is very greasy um and yeah i we didn't and, and i got it with onion rings and i think i got like seven onion rings oh man you described the sandwich in almost the same voice as the <laughs> hey guys dinosaur voice <laughs> hey guys i had the super bird at denny's the other day oh well yeah, it was just nice to be able to order something at 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's there which for. Which we haven't been able to do sure. in Halifax, the city that always sleeps. <laughs> um, the city that always sleeps. Nice. Uh, okay, we got another one. Okay. 
We got another, we got another I'm one. I'm so sorry that took forever. In the speaking. Oh, I don't boy. even think I don't even think we even answered it. What was the question? Hold no. on, hold on. I'll just use I'll just use Chat GPT. Um No, I'm, we've moved on. I'm not fucking kidding. That might be one of my favorite pieces yeah. of music, period. <laughs> <laughs> on Earth. It's really, it's really good. It's yeah. just, it's very, yeah. very good. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm sure we answered prohibition something. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. People people pay so much money for such shittier music, and we got that for free. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, prohibition and problem. Okay, yeah, well, let's move on. Um... Do, 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 do. Uh, Idras! Somebody who's probably not going to make it to our, uh, to mm. our, our level zero cup. Uh, you, you continued, but I thought you were just going to stop someone who's probably not going to make it. Somebody who's probably not going to make it, Idras! God, I hope Idras makes it. Both on like a personal level and for the significant percentage of our fan base that he as an individual <laughs> represents. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is actually an important one here, okay? Or or they, I guess I don't know. I don't know, uh I don't know Idris's pronouns. We do, uh, yeah, who knows? We don't know anybody. Uh anybody. Yeah. We don't know anyone. Not really. No. How how well You could all we be catfishing you? us I agree. for no reason. Yeah. You never know anybody. Yeah. Um uh, Idra says, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. My sixth anniversary is coming up, and oh, I have some one, yeah. options for the night out. I've narrowed it down to four restaurants. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, guys. Uh, there's four of us. We're each going to take a restaurant and we're going to look at it. Okay, we're going to go sure. to their website right. and we're going to try to, okay. we're going to, we're going to go there. Okay. Okay. So Julia, mm -hmm. you get Nadam, which is N-A-A-D-A-M. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's in Canberra, Australia. Okay. Take, take a look. Okay. okay. Uh, Alex, you get Wilma. Oh, no. Wilma. W-I-L-M-A. Okay. Canberra, Australia. Uh, in, Can in Canberra, Australia. Yeah. Uh, Luke, you get Saint Malo. Saint Malo. Uh, that's Canberra, the word Saint, Saint okay. and then space and M A L O. And that's also in Canberra. And I'm going to take the restaurant called Chop Chop. Mm. Nice. And we're all going to go there and we're going to we're going to see without looking at the other people's right. uh uh, uh, shit, and we're gonna try to make a case for oh each one. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, and this is for our sixth uh, anniversary. Saint Malo has a four point four on uh, Open Table, so that's nice. Oh, that, look at you! Look at you! Looking at uh, the Open Table. WilmaBarbecue.com.au. Uh, hit me with a really rapid slideshow of food items. Uh, that was very kind of clockwork orange, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just kind of like <laughs> an assault on the senses. So that's not upfront great website design. I don't like to be attacked. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, the website does appear to be non-interactive. I can't click on the menu <laughs> button. Non-interactive website. <laughs> I can hit book functions, inquire hours, or gift cards, but not menu. Okay. Um, I'm not as angry as I've ever been, but it's um... a, a rough start. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Mine's really looking really good right now so far. Um, this one, so this has, uh, it's a 4.9 with 195 Google reviews. Um, it's a Mongolian restaurant, which I've never actually had Mongolian cuisine. And I feel like if you're in a six year long relationship, you want to like, if you could like, never, never tried Mongolian cuisine together, that'd be a good thing to like mm. explore together. It's actually got yeah. some really yeah. cool looking um, menu here. You've got um, a king set, which is five courses crafted for a journey through Mongolian flavors, minimum two people. So you could actually have a, just a nice set dinner there. And yeah, they have a like one of these, like I'm looking at these these dishes in there. They sound amazing. They've got Mongolian barbecue, which is fatty lamb served with sizzling hot volcano stones and barbecue emulsion. Oh, God damn. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah, there's like there's um there's there's these board sog which are savory Mongolian donuts with garlic and wild onion butter. Those are oh. those are like um yeah vegan as well. So they've got vegetarian stuff as well, but also like the meat stuff sounds amazing. So 
God damn. Yeah, and they have uh, Mongolian-themed cocktails, which I don't know how, like, I don't think these are authentic or anything, but they've got, you know, you got um, Mongolian Hills, which is beef eater, gin, sea buckthorn, and mint. And it seems like sea buckthorn is a feature in a lot of these, in some of these uh, menu items, so I feel like sea buckthorn may be among traditional Mongolian, um, like, you know, flavoring, which is nice, a nice touch that they're incorporating into their cocktails. Ooh, and they have non-alcoholic. Okay. They have uh, non-alcoholic cocktails for people like me who don't really drink. There is there's sea berry steps, which is sea buckthorn, apple, orange, and lemonade, and a bunch of other ones too. So that's also really nice. I I was able to access the menu by pressing tab until it highlighted menu <laughs> and then hitting enter. I still can't click on the menu link. I think I think maybe the click box for it is like really small. <laughs> There's a pro- there's an HTML problem. Anyway, uh, the menu looks pretty good. Um, the main thing about it that I don't like is right at the bottom of the menu it says we politely decline any modifications to oh. the menu. And my immediate response to that is go fuck yourself. Uh, so the uh, the uh, it looks like very fancy barbecue. So like uh, Sydney Rock oysters with. Uh, finger lime and shiso, mm. uh, kingfish sashimi with blood blood plum, white soy and ginger. Uh, we got uh, uh, wagyu uh, kushiyaki uh, with green goddess and black garlic. Mm. Um, you know, Szechuan fried chicken, um, wood grilled wagyu with wasabi leaf chimichurri and miso mustard, pork cutlet with peanut chili crunch and garlic sauce. Uh, the three desserts are yuzu tart with wood fire, blueberries, and smell cream, caramelized white chocolate brownie, salted peanut, vanilla bean ice cream, coconut cheesecake, uh, cashew with cashew mango and watermelon. Um, overall, looks like fancy barbecue, if fancy barbecue is what you want. And it looks like uh, the main thing is you order a big, like, $69 per person thing that comes with your selection of eight of any of those, like, entree slash side options. And then you make your own meal accordingly. Uh, okay, um, okay. So here's what I would say, because that menu sounds pretty good. But because of that thing in the bottom of the menu and because of the website, I think we need to cross Wilma off. <laughs> I think it's the first I, one I, needs to go. It was a horrible experience. And then to solve the Sphinx's riddle to get in here, because I, I get it because a lot of this place will have like stuff like made like to order. Right. So they don't want to like. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm do modifications you can just choose different things if you don't want something but uh yeah i don't know like they, they <laughs> should they should modify your that shit was, if you that, ask it, them. It, that it, menu it's... was harder to access than the speakeasy password yeah no kidding <laughs> it was it was harder than <laughs> becoming a member of the noble speakeasy so nadam sounds pretty good it though, is it I says um, say. it says mongolian restaurant mongolian flavors with a modern twist uh, and yeah. the menu is very diverse, accepting reservations online as well, so you don't have to talk to anybody. There's pub, free pub, there's public parking. It doesn't say free public parking, but I'm assuming public parking means free. Um, and a lot, of, oh, it's just free parking. There's free parking available, so that's always good. Um, but meat, meat is from halal suppliers, and also like they don't have a lot of vegan me- um, menu items, but they do have a lot of vegetarian. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Uh, Luke, what are you what are you thinking about Saint Malo? Yeah, so St. Malo is looking okay. I mean, it's a it's a Spanish place, so you're going for tapas, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, tapas. Yeah, uh, <laughs> tapas. <laughs> you want some tapas. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, uh, the, the, what to me, what looks particularly nice is they have sort of an outdoor terrace called Gardino that you can go to and you can uh, enjoy your small plates there. Um, reasonably... Uh, like large selection of available tapas and in contrast to uh, Alex's place uh, this place not only has a ver- variety of things that are like gluten free dairy free vegetarian but also even lists specifically the items where that you can get as gluten or vegan uh, gluten free or vegan so um, that's pretty nice a uh, small list of items on mains in their sort of main menu that I'm looking at it's basically like paella, beef cheek, rainbow trout, lamb shoulder, a spatchcock, um, and then a small selection of uh, desserts. But I find that, you know, upscale restaurants at the smaller uh, menu tend to do the items mm-hmm. on their smaller menu mm-hmm. better anyway. So 
Um, you know, that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a nice, if, if the weather's good, that sounds particularly nice. Of course they have indoor dining as well, but you know, if you go to a place that has a, that like, you know, advertises their terrace, then you probably want to check the terrace out. So. All right. All right. Okay. So, uh, I will say the reviews for Wilma do appear to be fairly overwhelmingly positive. It's like straight up five stars out of yeah, 1,600 but, some but, reviews on Google. and but you, um, but you know what? For the site alone and the menu alone, fuck them. Yeah, I, I I don't like that pretentious, we politely decline. Like if I'm, especially if I'm paying to go to a fancy place and then they're going to tell me I can't change the menu. Like I can't ask for a, you know, a, like, hey, I'm allergic to this. Can you take it off? And they're like, fuck you. Get out of here, you peasant. Like, no, I'm, I'm not into that. All right. All right. Okay. Um, So I'm on, I, I, I'm on Chop Chop. And I'm going to tell you, Chop Chop is a... Uh, Chop Chop looks pretty great. So Chop Chop is, appears to be some Japanese fusion place. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's, it's halfway between funky and fancy. And uh, it looks like um, they're they're doing both in equal measure. It looks a little more it, okay. If I'm being honest, the food presentation looks fancy, but everything else looks a little more. It looks a little more chill, right? So if you're in the mood for something a little more chill, a little more funky, they got a they have a. Uh, uh, it looks like they've got some sort of mural on the wall with some crazy cartoon characters. Um, it it looks like a it looks like a vibe. So if you want like. You want something a little more, uh, a little more chill, but also like it's fancy enough to definitely be considered like a good anniversary uh, dinner. Uh, that might be where where you want to go. Looks looks like a cool spot. But uh, the Japanese uh, menu is, I mean, it looks looks great, and it depends what you want, right? Like, so they've got like a a feed me, which is fifty five per person, which is like. It's got a an edamame thing. It's got a salmon sashimi. It's got a nori taco uh, with salmon kingfish tuna and avocado salsa. Hmm. Yeah, uh, we got some, uh, and then they got a a, a, a zaitaku set, um, and uh, that's got all kinds of crazy stuff on it. What's a what's a what's a zaitaku set, uh, Luke? Zaitaku just means like. Um, luxurious. Yeah, well, they got a Wagyu uh, uh, tataki. They've got uh, with uh, with orange ponzu and onion. I mean, everything looks so goddamn colorful. Um, they got a whole fucking Wagyu steak if you if you want it, and that's uh, eighty nine per person. And they have they have a gluten free or vegan menu. Um, I gotta say the the for a fancy place. The menu is extensive. They have a, a raw bar. They have small plates. They got for sharing. Uh, some carbs. Um, <laughs> uh, they've got a, a nigiri and sushi maki roll menu, and just so many drinks. So many drinks. If you want to, if you want to get, you know, if you want to get wasted. This place to come. It's got, got a, it's got a lot of drinks, a lot of cool cocktails on here. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, without seeing the other ones, it kind of depends what you what you want. I would just say fuck Wilma and their stupid fucking bullshit menu and bullshit website. Am I right, guys? Mm -hmm. Let's get fired yeah, up about yeah, this. Yeah, I haven't seen either, but yeah, no, I'm, it's, I'm on board. Uh, like in principle, like the idea of sort of an upscale fancy barbecue place, like I don't really mind someone wanting to sort of experiment with the idea of a fine dining barbecue experience, but uh, making it that pretentious is kind of like that. For starters, that website was a well. That's lot. my thing. That strobing effect. I had to reload it, and I hated it. I can't click on the menu thing, and when I got there, the menu told me to go fuck myself yeah that's terrible <laughs> that, that that alone would disqualify we, it for me because for a barbecue place to say we politely decline any modifications to the menu i don't know man like so i'm not a picky eater and i think if you'd caught me a few years ago i wouldn't have given a shit because i'll eat anything i i never modify the menu like i just i 
I'm not a professional chef. I'd rather eat the thing the way the chef makes it. I don't deconstruct my sandwich if it has too much cilantro. I eat it and, you know, that's the thing. Um, but, uh, like, my partner has, like, food sensitivities and a different relationship with food than I do. And I've grown to appreciate that someone with dietary preferences is not necessarily being picky. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of psychological reasons why food can be a challenge for some people. And for that to be on the menu, just like, hey, uh, I know that you're a human being and that you may have your own whole thing going on, but to us, you are a wad of cash <laughs> and a seat at a table and you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's yourself. that customer service thing uh, that so, really bothers me. So, uh, Idris, if you could do me a favor and actually <laughs> go to Wilma as if you're going to stay, but then just immediately ask to see the manager and tell him that he's an asshole, uh, that'd yeah, be great. Throw a bowling ball through the window. Um, the, 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 the customer service thing is the part that gets me stuck on the speakeasy thing as well, where it's just like, you know, this idea where you're not going to accommodate people. And as well, like the menu, I mean, you've got, it, you've got this place. It's an expensive place. It's a nice place. And if you are stumbling at your menu, your website with your menu... That just tells me you're overlooking it. Your attention for detail is not good. Um, yeah. I do I do want to clarify. That was one guy <laughs> one time. <laughs> also, like, you could also argue... I, I love your take on it, Julia. It was just for, the, for posterity. That was one guy one time. You don't time. know if he was know trained like the... that, if that was just his own thing. But even if he was, like, I think the vast majority of people that are going to a speakeasy kind of want a little bit of theater. That's, you know I don't I mean? mind theater. No, no, I have no problem with theater. I, I think maybe he... W I don't really want to defend him because he's a stranger and I'll side <laughs> with Julia 10 times out of 10 for sure. But the the I th my, my thought at the time was that he was going for a little bit of theater and he was just being cheeky. But I think you make a great point where... Uh, if someone's like all nervous about doing something new, mm -hmm. and then you you tease them about it, like yeah, you're a dick. Life, just show them to the yeah, speakeasy. That's a dick move. Because yeah, I mean, some dudes like, oh, oh, I don't know, and, and I don't even know if I've got. Maybe I didn't memorize it right, and they're nervous about it. And then you're gonna pull something like that, and like if you make my heart sink like that for just you know entertainment or theater, I'm like, no, it's completely lost on me. Yeah. Uh, I I will say I'm not much of a fine dining like guy, for, among other reasons, because like much like a pausing for three like much like that speakeasy guy would have to throw hands with julia if, if ever he tried that uh like anyone who asks me to put on a tie had better be prepared to be in the paper the next day like that's that's i'm not i'm just not gonna do it i'm not into that shit uh so yeah the whole fancy dining is not something that i ever really am into I, for that reason okay so i went to all of the the the, the, the websites uh, <laughs> and i'm checking all of them out and i gotta tell you right now it kind of depends what you're into. Nadam is fucking great yes. if you want an adventure. Yes. Like, if you want an adventure, that's the place to go. And it's also classy. There's a whole... It's beautiful. It's classy. It's beautiful. It it looks like, yeah, there's just there's just stuff on there that I, it would be like, I've never had this in my mm -hmm. life. This is, this would be incredible. Um, and oh, the food looks really mm -hmm. good. Not going to lie. So <laughs> I think that's your adventure choice. Um, St. Malo, like the fucking, everything sounds so goddamn good. I think if I had to choose, I'd probably go to St. Malo. The, it's, it's, it sounds really good. It's, it's all Spanish. It's going to be fucking amazing. You're, you're going to love it. It's a little, it's a little, you know, it's a little safer, but it's, 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 it's fucking amazing. It you're going like, for an anniversary. Yeah. And you want to, you, you want something that you can rely on, you know? It look yeah, exactly. It's very it's very reliable. It looks it's it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be very chill. Uh, so the very cursory glance I did at the reviews, like most of the negative points on it were price. Yeah, but you're gonna that's just and weird. actually the price is I'm looking at the menu and I don't know what the Australian dollar um, maps to on the Canadian dollar. So maybe it's like twice as much and these numbers are are fairly large, but like. You know, uh, at an upscale place, 20 bucks for a dessert is kind of not unusual, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, 20 bucks for a plate of tapas or, you know, 35 bucks for Wagyu actually seems cheap to me. So I'm sure that the Australian dollar is worth quite a bit more, but apparently it's 89. One cents. Australian dollar is worth a thousand Canadian <laughs> dollars. Yeah. Ah, there you go. The entire country so is just a thin film of, it's a thin film of dust over one giant golden <laughs> nugget. 
<laughs> uh, and you know, Chop Chop is kind of it's 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 a little it's a little more chill. Uh, but I'm I would worry I would need to I'm. Uh, it's gonna make me sound. I'm a little worried about the um, portion sizes <laughs> at Chop Chop. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Same concerns like about Wilma. Small? Yeah. Like I, I, I bet that grilled wagyu with wasabi leaf chimichurri and miso mm-hmm. mustard, where it's one of the eight dishes. I mean, you're getting eight dishes mm-hmm. for seventy bucks, but like, uh, I bet they're real small dishes. Like I, you're not. Like if I go into a barbecue place, I want. To, I'm going there because I'm hungry, and I want to feel the opposite of that. I quickly. want a pile of meat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to eat until I feel regret and sleepy. <laughs> that's what I want at a barbecue place. And not only do I suspect that's not the case at Wilma, but I also suspect if you tell them you want your wood grilled wagyu without the miso mustard, they're gonna just gonna mm-hmm. refuse. They're gonna say no. You can scrape off your mustard like an animal. <laughs> I, I will say but- um, for Nadam, I I didn't look at any other the, uh, any other other website. I just have this weird unjustified loyalty toward it because it was the one assigned to me, and I don't know if that's the only reason. <laughs> but I. I that was this the assignment. Is, yeah. You were you're this here to defend it. I'm the only one who was like, no, I hate this place I immediately. Would, I would pick Nadam. <laughs> Their website was very easy to read. I like all the choices. Yeah, all this stuff looks like an adventure, but it's not like an adventure where I don't understand what this stuff is, right? Like, like uh, you know, beef and duck pate with spiced currant sauce with traditional flatbread. I would love to try traditional Mongolian fl- fra- flatbread. No. Spiced currant sauce I've never had. Yeah. You know, this this menu nope. is, it sounds like a fun adventure. And yeah, maybe, you know, I'm not going to love everything, but... It sounds like a cool night out. Yeah, it sounds out. like a really cool night out with something completely different. And I, I mean, you know, I mean, I've had my fair share of Japanese food, and I'm sure, you know, whatever. But um, for me, I would pick this one. I, uh, okay, so I, Chop 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 is basically a, a, a sushi place. So you could just order as much as you want. So don't worry about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I, I'm just I do want to say, it'll make, make one point. I don't know if Julia's going to mm-hmm. agree with me as someone who also has, has experienced a lot of sushi, as you just said. Um, but, uh, like... The, the one thing that, that I have always worry about with, like, places that try and go fancy, funky with, like, uh, that are also, you know, sushi main is, like, they they do a lot of, like, weird combination mm. things, but they don't focus down enough on, like, mm. just the regular ass mm-hmm. sushi. And I'm, I'm very much a purist. Like, I want to go to a sushi place where it's, like, a dude behind a glass counter that mm-hmm. is just cuts of mm-hmm. fish and he's going to chop and he's going to slice that thing up for you like uh, you know uh, build, make the nigiri in front of you and just drop it right right there you know you're, and you're not I wrong want, like yeah. i want maguro i want like salmon i want like kimidai <clears throat> and i don't need like weird rolls and shit like that like in Japan, I've never seen like a fucking dragon <laughs> roll or a. You, you, don't, know. you don't want a weird like rice right. on the outside, right. avocado and cream oh, cheese God, filled yeah, mango like... topped sesame seed monstrosity. What is the deal with uramaki in in North America? It's it's like why is the rice on the outside? The whole point of the nori is that you don't have to grip the rice directly. Um, and at those prices, when it's that expensive, I would have extremely high expectations for having yeah. really nailed those basics like really like make sure the rice is good not too hard whatever not too soft you know right time yeah. everything would be so if, if those came out to me those rolls and like the rice was cool or something or like weirdly hard or mm-hmm. like i would be like disappointed because i feel like yeah you are paying for like the fusiony type of like fancy spin on it but i i like if they don't have those basics it's going to be a disappointment okay you've convinced me julia especially after looking at the gallery nadama's place yes I win. No, I don't know. That's yeah, that's my vote. Yeah, well played. That's my. Now vote. the question uh, is, where did Idras go? Yeah. Stay <laughs> oh my tuned. God. Yeah. I uh, I I'm a sucker for any sort of sushi. The weird inside <laughs> out mango covered sushi rolls. They're a monstrosity, but I appreciate them in the same way that I appreciate like, you know, uh, sweet and mm-hmm. sour chicken balls. Oh, I love from, them too. Uh, I love Spoon, the weird Chinese stuff too. Place. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't mind the Canadianified, like the East Coast Donair wrap full of like the sweet honey <laughs> sauce that was literally made because they thought we were too weak for garlic. <laughs> and you know what? They were right. I I really like the, dis- like, I appreciate like a garlic sauce Donair meat wrap with the spice and stuff like that. I've got, you know, the I, I like all yeah. sorts of things. 
But I'm, I'm a sucker for the for the sweet Canadianified but, donair. With that, like white vinegar and uh, con- and and uh, condensed milk. It's a magical combination. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like what to tell you. The, it, they they made something kind of special just for us, you know, weak sauce Canadians, and it worked, and I'm happy for them. And it's very. It looks like uh, it looks like semen. All right. Yeah, I, I, for anyone who has not been to the East Coast to have a donair, it's a little hard to explain. Yeah, it's very hard to explain. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's just, it's, it's, it's yeah, but it's, but it's, it's not. It's spiced, like, yeah, uh, meat, um, like donair kebab, except that the sauce is basically condensed. Oh, my, oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's basically going to a kebab place, but it's a sweet it's, sauce. Typically, it's, uh, Tomatoes, onions, lots and lots of door near meat, all in a big wrap, and just positively just it is li- drenched in sweet, sweet sauce. It is literally white vinegar and condensed milk mixed together. That's all. The, and then and then they put it on. And I, I'm going to tell you, it's it's tangy and sweet and gross, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, Donaire is like the flavor of regret. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, um, it's delicious. Oh, yeah, no, it, but it, you it's are so never heavy in your body. Happy after you have eaten it. Yeah. Um, I just the other day, like two or three days ago, ordered from a place here in Edmonton called like, Marco's Famous or something like that, which you know is always a red flag. But <laughs> it means um, they put lettuce on their donairs, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I just I got a burger, but like they also in, instead of like fries, I wanted something that was a little bit more you know proteiny than like carby so i ordered their donair fingers and that was just like it was a hot dog of donair basically breaded and then had like a facsimile of east coast donair sauce but was wrong (laughs) um yeah it was a whole thing i'm sorry breaded donair breaded donair meat but it's like yeah it was not like a slice of donair meat that you would normally get it was like it was like the whole inside of of the the matzah finger was just meat. All right, all right. it's like a cross great. section of it is just like yeah, it's just like meat. It's it's like a donair hot dog. I kind of I kind of want to I <laughs> kind of want to try that. That sounds amazing. It, yeah, one of the uh, it came like one, the the package the pack of them or not really pack but the box of them or the the little package of them that I received was like only like eight of them and i stopped it <laughs> you know um they're about the size of like your index finger you oh know? my god uh one of my stranger experiences in edmonton was going to a halifax themed restaurant oh, called blowers, blowers and and grafton, and grafton. Yeah, yeah. N- named after a street corner here in halifax and they had a lot of uh halifax delicacies some of which were totally fictional <laughs> Um, that I've never had here or heard of. <laughs> uh, but uh, one thing that they had that was quite the artifact was Pictou County pizza. Pictou County is where my mother grew up here in Nova Scotia. And oh, with the, brown the pizza is like, it's got a brown oh, soup stock yeah. based sauce, yeah. which is very strange. Uh, it's a little bit spicier than you would think for white people <laughs> pizza. And the cheese is on the top. It's the last thing that goes on. I, I, the cheese goes on is like, a smooth, glassy. That's a deal breaker greasy. for me, right there. It's really. Uh, and just <laughs> go ahead, sir. And anyway, it, the stuff that uh, they had at the place was mostly authentic, only in that it had the weird brown soup stock-based sauce. Yeah. Um, I am fond of the pizza just because I had it when I was a kid, and I'm not a picky eater. But certainly, someone who was horrified by that variant of uh, the pizza, I. Don't have any defense. No, I, I've, I, I didn't have it until I was in my forties, and when I did, I was like, "Oh, this is, I don't know about this." But you know what? They've got a couple of them around here, and there's always a lineup, so people love it. It's actually a hell of a drive to get to like the original place that does it. I think they still do it though. Yeah, they got Kenny's around here that does that. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, we got to move on, guys, because we got we have we spent I'm so sorry we spent so much time. We're like an hour and a half into this episode. I think so we for, might need to stop soon. 
We got for reference, guys. We started yeah. late. We fucked around for so long because we were all super salty <laughs> before. We, so like, we started recording late and then didn't actually start for a while after that. And we're barreling towards two a.m. Yeah. right now. It's, yeah, it's so like much later and longer than Edmonton. we normally go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to go to bed soon. But we 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 have to. We gotta. We got pink bunny cake, spivey Lou, and uh, uh, Nat. We got we got questions from them. Um, but all right, well, we'll answer. Your, we, so we have two options here. We can either answer their questions very quickly, or we can save them for next week. All right, let's let's do it real fast. Okay. Let's do it real fast. Yeah. All right. Okay. Fast ones. Here, right, we here we go. All right. Uh, Pink. <laughs> Number real one. Real quick, Luke. You should you should have a fast version of that for these moments. <laughs> <laughs> Just double speed. I can uh, I can take it and then like yeah play it at like <laughs> you know four hundred percent speed or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Pink Buddy Cakes. Whiskey Matt mentions that he prefers Bullet. Excellent choice. Only bourbon I can drink straight. Thank you. It's amazing. Even Julia mentions amazing cocktails they had. But what are the drinks of choice for Alex and Luke? Uh, Alex, I know you don't drink, but what's your drink of choice? Uh, I like uh, unusual drinks. I'm a big fan of ginger beer, really strong, spicy stuff. And also, I like Lapsung Sushong tea. is probably my favorite beverage. Smoke tea. Uh, it tastes like tastes like a wet campfire. Oh, it's great. I, I actually, yeah, it's great. You got me onto that. <laughs> and just very, very strong black coffee. Really, that's what yeah, I sustain that's myself true. on. And like and really, like really bad diner coffee too that tastes like uh, sugar crisp. Mm, yeah, sugar crisp and like paint thinner. Yeah. Okay, Luke. Um, so like like Alex, actually, I'm a, I'm a fan of a good ginger beer. If we're talking alcoholic, then so I like myself a Moscow Mule or a uh, or a dark and stormy. Um, for other cocktails, uh, probably a rusty nail. Like I like it. I like a Drambuie. Um, mix it with a little bit of decent, um, but not like super top shelf uh, whiskey, and you got a good drink. Awesome, uh, Julie. Do you got anyone to to mention besides the the cocktails? I know you're not much of a drinker either, but do you have a drink that uh, a drink of choice outside of that? Oh, I love tea. I love roasted teas like Kojicha, the Japanese uh, roasted tea. Um, really, really nice. That's probably my favorite kind of tea. Or Genmai Cha. I also really like. Um, for, for those mm, good stuff, got some hold you oh, it's so kitchen. good. Yeah, I had some tonight. It's really good. Um, yeah, for for other kinds of drinks, like I don't really tend to drink other types of beverages too too much. But um, like I, I actually really like just tonic water with a bit of lime or something. That's always a nice thing. Amazing. Um, and as proud members of the vampire community, we of course all appreciate a hot steamy mug of human blood. Of course, I mean, I think saying. that goes without yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Spivey. Um, okay, so uh, this is actually sort of a okay. Um, <laughs> this is sort of a response to last week's questions. You guys are awesome. Also, I asked a question for Gloria without thinking what my answer is. So it was kind of a challenge. I do believe that Holmes is a level sociopath and Laura leans him into the role pretty hard in this game. So I would choose, hear me out, Connor of Daventry to be her noble square and, and uh, heavily armed partner. I also could see him working, re- regretfully saying, I hope the good museum staff understand my need for their bones. <laughs> Frustrated, scraping shiny skeleton keys embedded in paintings, shouting, "This will not work." <laughs> uh, uh, I would absolutely love to hear what other people think. I might take this to the Discord. Uh, somebody on the Discord had an answer for this, and it was amazing. Um, what was it? What was it? What was it? What was it? The questions for Glory uh, channel is so fucking. If you would also what? like to participate in a slightly more active version of the questions for glory, we have a questions for glory chat channel on our discord. Yeah. It, it really de- <laughs> it, it devolved into some Ziggy. Literally shit. hearing Matt scroll. It, 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 it yeah. unravels so quickly that we have wheel. to branch off conversations onto the random channel. I we think have started that choosing... other channels as a result of conversations in the uh, uh, rando and uh, questions for glory channels. I, I think uh, a choosing a, a square straight laced foil for your more you know uh, uh, neurodivergent detective is a solid 
Watson choice. I don't know necessarily that I would call the original Watson a square more than his surroundings, right? Because he was like an accomplished doctor and war veteran who made time to run around <laughs> at night shooting criminals with his best friend. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So Nat chose Passionate Patty yes. from Larry Three, which I also think oh, is a yeah. fucking perfect choice. Fucking perfect. Uh, yeah, there you go. Boom. Uh, Excellent. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, join the Discord. Um, Questions for <laughs> Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Nat, Colonel's be questions. <clears throat> there is an uh, Amon Ra tie in with McDonald's. What are the Happy Meal toys? <laughs> I think they all have uh, to be little the... plastic knives of Amon Ra. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's definitely uh, one. Sarcophagus, a sarcophagus yeah. that you open. It's got the guy inside, and you can poke squishable yes. eyes. Yeah, oh my uh, God. a little uh, hieroglyphics got... decoder Aww. ring. Oh yeah, fuck yeah! Definitely all of the corpses. How they are are, are a thing with the little wheels that you just pull back. They're like cars. They're like racing cars, <laughs> but they're all just corpses. Or, like, maybe you get corpse pieces and you have to assemble them like that fucked up listen, Inspector Gadget toy. Listen, guys, I've been getting McDonald's toys for years. They're not complicated. They can't be. <laughs> they have to be. They used to be They used yeah, to they be did. way more complicated. I know, like, they like, did. Like, 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 the, like the Inspector the Gadget movie tie-in toy yeah. where you had but to get his head separately. And... They're all plastic garbage. You need, you need them to hold on. Most McDonald's toys you hold on for six months and then you give them to Value Village. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's all they are now. It sucks. But yeah. in an ideal world, that's what they would we're, be. We're being more idealistic and nostalgic yeah. about it, for sure. Yeah, I still uh, have did... a cheap Super Mario Brothers three promotional Happy Meal toy. That's a raccoon Mario with a suction cup and a spring. Mm. So you'd like push him down, and it would like stay on, stay down for a couple of seconds, and it would like pop up into the air, and he would do a little flip. It's good stuff. I'd keep it on uh, top the Dakota the ring is such a solid mm. choice. Yeah, a little hieroglyphics uh, Dakota, Dakota ring that would forever misinform mm-hmm. people about how hieroglyphics mm-hmm. work. The uh, the daggers that all yeah, say made Pittsburgh, in yeah. wherever, um, made in Pittsburgh, except you win a special prize if you oh find one that doesn't say that. That's amazing. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I want a mag. I want a plastic win a mag- free Happy Meal. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, just a free Happy Meal. I want a plastic uh, magnifying glass that sits in a stand that's the three kids. <laughs> nice. Aww. Yeah, and it comes with a bug. It's perfect. That you can burn. To burn. I want a couch flapper hand. figurine on a couch. Oh, my God. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The couch flapper. That would be my favorite <laughs> toy for sure. Uh, yeah, there would be no... You just press a little lever yeah, and she yeah, beckons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it's all it does. There'd be no Ziggy toy. <laughs> Maybe like a head, no. like he is an eraser with a head shaped like his head. Oh, oh. If there is a Ziggy corpse sprite, you could be one of the corpse toys yeah. where you just, you know, oh, you get a piece of Ziggy, you know, <laughs> only 10 more Happy Meals, you'll have a whole Ziggy. <laughs> uh, Trade the Ziggy bits with your friends, make go so you can have a full Ziggy. The, 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 the possibilities mm-hmm. are endless. It is the danger of Amanda, after all. The the Dakota ring is such an incredible, yeah. incredible choice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks everybody. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Just from. Oh wow! Did we get through? We're done. Wow. That's it. And it's only almost two o'clock in the goddamned morning. I can't believe that we went through all four of those restaurants. It. <laughs> That was fun. We, we science yeah. that. We science that shit. Yeah. We really did. That's amazing. Um, hey, yeah. Good luck, everybody. Stay cool. Stay, stay safe. <laughs> stay, stay sharky. Yeah. You know we right. love you. Stay uh, sharky, everyone. I know we only get one episode worth of gameplay in every single time, but that's because we spend the other episode being your private dancing monkeys, and that's pretty and, fun. And we only do that for yeah, now. Absolutely. Who knows? Next time we might play two episodes in a row. Who knows? R- right. Yeah. Maybe we won't. Maybe we won't even have a show next week. Hmm? We'll get we'll but next right. week we'll get too big. We'll do like one extra person will describe and we'll be too good to read the comments. Just you wait. Uh leave your leave your leave us your questions for Amanda. We'll 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 see you guys later. Yeah. Questions for Amanda. <laughs> uh well, 
This was only, this was slightly better done if I managed to export my audio correctly, but it was still pretty salty and meandering. Yeah. But we love you guys, and we're glad that yeah, you join us every awesome. week. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Yeah. We will see you yeah. next maybe. week, maybe. Uh, in the meantime, find, your set, find, yourself. find yourselves a tomorrow. Yeah, a Hide tomorrow. from the eclipse. Mm -hmm. We're really into yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Have yourselves a tomorrow. Have your really own. into you. Stick and stay. Don't, Stick and stay. Don't no, stare at the that. eclipse. Don't do it. We don't, don't know what it's going to do. And, we don't trust you know, it. if the world does end because of the eclipse, whoops. I guess we got it wrong. Yeah. Been a good run. If the good... world ends because of the eclipse, we won't see yeah. you next week. We won't see you next week. All right, everybody. <laughs> we'll try to set up an apocalyptic radio show, but we none of us have the skills yeah. required to do that. If, if That's true. Leave us, your, leave us your questions for stuff and we'll get and to it. And if you say you had a great and time, we'll delete it. <laughs> That's true. Again, We're middling. only accepting middling feedback for this series of episodes. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna try to get YouTube to implement a sideways thumb. <laughs> <laughs> a meh thumb. Meh. Yeah. A little wavy hand. <laughs> like, eh, I don't know, maybe. That's for that's for Jojo uh already. He, he, yeah. That will that's that's for him. We'll do that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'm into it. Hey, everybody. Thanks, yeah. everybody. We love you. We love you forever. We love you forever. God, do we ever love you. God, I don't think we can get that through to you. Stick and, as always, mm -hmm. stay. Stick forever. and stay. Because once you come to Matt's yeah. house, you can never leave. Well, though, that is the plan. We're going we're gonna to get together. Yeah. Right it's going to happen. Yeah. It will be a trap, but it's a fun trap. Cool. Bye. Bye. Bye.